Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we are making two beautiful leather belts. Now, chapter one, we did our sizing. Easy enough. Chapter two, we're going to do our edge work. Well, what's edge work? It's as simple as this. We're going to add a groove line, we're going to bevel our edge, and then we're going to slick that edge. It's going to make our belts or our projects look very professional, very finished. In fact, the tools, easy to pick up, inexpensive, and very durable. Now, remember too, everything I use in this video can be found on weaverleathercraft.com. All right, so let's do this with a big shot. It's hard to shoot belts, complete, and get any detail. So I've taken our end cuts from our blanks. We're gonna use those as swatches so we can see the tool close up, how it works, and exactly what it does. Now, the first tool we're gonna to use is a groover. Primary job here is to lay in a groove line when we're gonna hand sew. But I use this as part of my edge work because it's gonna dress up that edge. Easy tool to pick up. We've got a cutting head and we've got an adjustable arm. So I'm gonna take that arm, I'm gonna butt that up right against the edge of my leather. It's easy enough to feel. Now I'm gonna raise my hand up about 45 degrees and give this just a little counterclockwise motion. Easy enough. Let's make one more pass. Nice, clean, and deep. But we wanna be cautious here. I don't wanna add so many groove lines that that's, this becomes a tab and tears off in the near future. Nice, clean and consistent. Just what we're looking for. All right, let's jump over to our water buffalo. You can put in one or two passes, your project, your call. All right, now in my opinion, that doesn't look to me as clean as it does here, but we're gonna keep going. So we're gonna jump over to what's called a bevel or an edger. Our cutting head is right down here between this V. I'm gonna take this tool, I'm gonna to put it right on the edge of the leather. Like my groover, I'm gonna come up about 45, but now I'm gonna go out about 45. And again, pressure really isn't the point. The tool's gonna to do the work for us, but I'm simply gonna run that down my edge. All right, easy enough on the veg tan. Now, we want to round and slick our edges. So what I wanna do is flip this over, and I want to bevel the back side as well. Nice, now that gets me on my way to having a nice rounded edge. All right, let's jump over to our water buffalo. Now, I bevel, groove, and edge, or burnish or slick about 90% of my work. In this situation, that to me does not look great. Now I can run my hand across that. It's gonna help a little bit, but to me, that's actually the dye color is starting to overpower the color of the oils. So therefore, in this situation, I really like that clean, tight cut there. So on our crazy horse, we are not going to edge, but we certainly are on our veg tan. Now, let's do one more thing to our edge. Now you can do this with simple water, but we're gonna burnish our edge. This is gum track. Makes it a little easier, a little faster, but also too, a little bit more durable. So I'm simply gonna run that down my edge. I wanna be careful because I don't want some of this to wrap over to the top grain. Just in case I'm gonna dye or top coat or antique and I don't want that to interfere with that. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna take a burnisher. This is a Coca Bolo, gorgeous. Multiple cuts here. In fact, this entire tool is helpful. So I'm gonna jump down here to roughly an eight to nine ounce and I'm gonna run this back and forth, maybe a little over and a little back. The point here again is not pressure, it's more heat and friction. Now I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, we're gonna give it a shot. But now you can see I've got a very smooth, rounded, slicked edge. It's almost a high gloss. Let's see if we can get in in there. Well, it's not gonna work that great. But anyway, all right, so I'm gonna do that to both sides. Now that we've got our samples done, or our swatches, let's jump over here and I'm gonna bevel, groove, and burnish our Herman Oak. Now, I always start with my groover first because if we bevel or edge first, we have less edge for our guide to hit. And right to our point. Good, looks good. Now that's easy enough. In fact, I tell you what, let's move those samples aside. Move the crazy horse aside. Okay, so we've got a good clean bevel on that, or groove. Now let's jump over to our bevel. 
Now remember too, anything I'm using in this video, just look to the links below and you'll find that product. Try to keep that in the camera shot sometimes can be a little bit tough, all right? Now, just like on our swatch, we're gonna bevel both front and both back so we can get that nice rounded edge. And our last side, and because that doesn't have a top grain, typically that's not as easy to bevel. Now, let's jump over. We're gonna add some gum tragacanth. There we are. Now, again, like I said, I wanna be a little bit careful so I don't have that gum trag wrap around to the top grain. And there we go, last little bit there. Now, you can certainly burnish from right here. That's easy enough, but in all honesty, for me, if I drop the edge of my belt right on the edge of my table, hanging over a little bit, now I've got some good body in that belt, and I can really burnish that evenly. And there is our last little section. Now, again, the point here, is not pressure, it's heat and friction, because I don't want to develop a little lip along my edge. Now I can always bevel that back down, but now we're backing up. So, clean and ready. Edges are ready to go, clean, tight, and very professional. Mm -hmm.